I actually used to be homeless at the age of 13 years old. That's why I started selling candy. That is the only way I could make money. I couldn't get a job at the age of 13 years old. You have to be 15 years, years old to get a worker's permit. That's why I started selling candy. That's where the idea originally originated from. Welcome to the Invention Stories podcast, where we share stories of inventors who turn their idea into a product. Please visit our website at www.inventionstories.com. And now, from the Invention Stories Podcast World Headquarters Studios in Morro Bay, California, is our host, Robert Baer. Welcome to the Invention Stories Podcast. I am your host, Robert Baer. And thank you for listening. This is episode three, the first part of a two part interview with our special guest, Spencer Trotter and the Anywhere Fridge. I first learned about the Anywhere Fridge from an Indiegogo campaign. Traditional coolers are problematic because of the ice component, and refrigerators in the household are typically one of the most energy-consuming appliances. We've got Spencer Trotter on the line, and he is currently in Roswell, New Mexico. Spencer, thank you for joining us today. What is the Anywhere Fridge? The Anywhere Fridge is basically a solar-powered, portable refrigerator and freezer that you don't need ice for that you can take anywhere and it lasts 24 7 that has its own battery so that way it lasts all night and recharges throughout the day and runs throughout the day and just goes 24 7 so you can live totally off the grid and for you listening to this podcast now you know why i wanted spencer trotter on so early i mean this is an incredible groundbreaking achievement and spencer what gave you the idea what was the inspiration Sure. Well, you know, uh, you know, it all started at the age of 13 years old. I used to sell candy bars. And uh, what I would do is I wanted to sell candy bars to help out my family monetarily, uh, financial uh, finances and so forth. And so I thought, you know, I should make a, some kind of business out of selling candy. And so I would actually, I would, I would take a bus over to Walmart uh, every day and I would buy these candy bars and they sold them for at the time, 88 cents uh, a candy bar. And I would go door to door and sell them for five dollars each and i would sell about 20 of these candy bars a day and make a hundred dollars a day but the problem lied that my candy bars would tend to melt every day in the hot sun <laughs> and so i thought to myself well you know there has to be a better way of keeping things refrigerated uh, or even frozen so that way people would want to buy my candy and my merchandise and I thought, you know, what well, he had, they have ice chests and they have ice, but it's sloppy, it's messy, it makes a mess. It doesn't keep your things cold enough. And, you know, I would ride my bicycle to these neighborhoods where I would sell the candy at. And so I thought, well, you know, I can't carry a big rectangle box on my bicycle every day and ride to these neighborhoods. And that's when I thought of the Anywhere fridge. I thought, you know, what if they had a refrigerator that was solar powered and lightweight and portable as well? So that way you can maneuver it and transport it anywhere you want to go. And that's when I thought of the folding mechanism of the Anywhere Fridge. So I can fold it up, take it on my bicycle, bring it with me. When I'm all done selling my candy, fold it back up, bring it back home. Spencer, if I did my, uh, if I did my calculations correct, that's about 568% quite a markup. And what was your best seller? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's funny you mentioned it. My best seller, believe it or not, was Reese's. Yeah. I think everybody likes Reese's. <laughs> I think the Anywhere Fridge is a great name. It's, very, it's a good description. Starts with an A. Um, how did you decide upon the name for your invention? The Anywhere Fridge was initially called, 10 years ago, it was initially called the Car Fridge. And I named it the car fridge because of the fact that it was initially designed for your car, okay? And so what you would do is you would fold it up and you would put it in your trunk and you would leave it in your trunk. And the purpose of leaving it in your trunk was to have it so that way, say, when you go grocery shopping, you have ice cream, eggs, or milk, you can simply unfold the Anywhere fridge, which doesn't take up any space in your trunk but five inches, which is insignificant. So that way you're not having this big bulky rectangle box in your trunk all the time but only when you need it you can unfold it that's that's why we made it collapsible as well so it was called the car fridge so you can unfold it put your eggs ice cream and milk in there when you go grocery shopping so that way you don't have to rush home to put your groceries away especially in the case if you want to go see a movie 
you don't want to miss the movie time, you want to catch the movie on time. You don't have to go and rush home just to put your groceries away. So it was initially called the car fridge for that purpose. Now, we moved on from the car fridge to the solar fridge because we named it the solar fridge because we said, hey, instead of making it bound to your car and only being able to work in your car, because at this time it was not able to work anywhere else but inside your car, which is why we named it the car fridge. And then we thought, hey, why not make it solar powered? So we made it solar powered. And it was called the solar fridge because not only can you plug it in your car, but you can also use it outside anywhere, anytime as well. And then we thought, well, hey, why not, instead of just limiting it to your car and in the sun, why not be able to use it inside like a dorm room, a dorm room, an apartment, wherever? That's when I came up with the name Anywhere fridge. So you can plug it into your wall outlet, just like a standard household refrigerator. You can also plug it into your car or just leave it outside. It's solar powered. Hence, anywhere fridge. <laughs> and how was the patent process? Oh my goodness, yeah. You know, and, I, and I'll tell you, like I, like I say, I started from the age of 13 because of my experience uh, selling candy door-to-door as a 13-year-old boy. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I realized that, you know, this, this can not only solve the problem of keeping things refrigerated, but also can solve the problem of vaccines, medications, inoculations, things of that nature. Things for, uh, say, for instance, doctors worldwide, which can uh, keep vaccines maintaining a certain temperature for inoculations and things of that nature. And I'll tell you, that all started at the age of about 17 years old. At 17 years old, I didn't quite have enough money to attain a patent. Uh, You know, patents, as you know, are quite expensive. And so at 18, uh, sorry, 17, um, I actually went down to the local patent library and you can actually attain your own patent by doing a research, doing your due diligence to filling out the paperwork. And so that's what I had to do initially to acquire the patent until I started getting the necessary funding to acquire a provisionary patent. And then from a provisionary patent, I moved to the utility patent and the design patent. You're listening to the Invention Stories podcast. I am your host, Robert Baer, and today we have Spencer Trotter with us. Now, Spencer, did it cost as much as you had thought, or did it take as long as you imagined? It was a little bit more, you know, than I expected. Patents aren't cheap. (laughs) The initial provisionary patent cost me about $1,000, which isn't bad. Uh, you know, you can save that up from um, from working a job, saving up your money. And so that's what I did for the, provi- the uh, provisionary patent. And after I crossed that bridge, I then uh, acquired enough money to attain the utility patent, which utility patents cost around five to $7,000 because of the patent search, the criteria that's involved in that, and uh, getting all the uh, paperwork done, filed with the patent attorney and so forth. And then there's the design patent, which only costed about $3,000. Um, and then filing the paperwork. So altogether, it's about $15,000 for your utility patent and your design patent. And it's important to have a design patent as well as utility patent because the utility patent uh, covers the functionality of the product, what the product does, how it works, how it functions. The design patent covers the initial design and the entire design of the entire product. Um, So those two patents are very important to obtain right away. And of course, not everybody can just dish out $15,000 right out the bat. So that's why you begin it with a provisionary patent, which is only $1,000. And that protects you for a year until you can obtain enough money to get the utility and design patent. Well, Spencer, did you ever consider entering into a licensing agreement with a large manufacturer, maybe receiving a royalty check every so often in the mail? Absolutely. And, you know, that that actually has crossed my mind uh, quite a bit of times, as a matter of fact. (laughs) I, um, as far as that's concerned, I did uh, contact Whirlpool. And Whirlpool, I actually was able to get a hold of the, the CEO of Whirlpool. The CEO of Whirlpool? Hey, nice job. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, of course, you have to jump through your hoops. You have to jump through the the secretary of the secretary of the secretary. (laughs) And finally, I was able to uh, get a hold of the CEO of Whirlpool. And there's kind of a trick to doing this. Now, for for anybody watching this or listening, the trick to doing it, it's it's very strategic. And you have to play your cards right because they're not going to let the CEO of, say, Kenmore or Whirlpool talk to just anyone. 
And the way that I did it, if it helps anybody out there, is when I would make these calls to the secretaries of the secretaries of the assistant of the secretaries, you have to work your way up the ladder, right? So what I did is to every one of these secretaries and assistants to get to the main person, the CEO of Whirlpool, I had to basically tell them this is all I did. Okay, It's pretty simple, not complicated at all. I simply said, they answered a the phone, Whirlpool, how can I help you? And I say, hi, my name is Spencer. I need to speak to so-and-so, the person's name, the CEO's name of Whirlpool. And of course, they're going to say, what is it regarding? What is it about? No, he's busy. He's in a meeting. You name it. They'll make up something because, you know, he's the CEO of the company. The key word that I said to get a hold of this man is it's a personal matter. And I would keep repeating that keyword. It's a personal matter to every secretary, every assistant. It's a personal matter. It's a personal matter until I got up to the chain. Because the fact of the matter is, is that they're not going to ask you beyond it because it's a personal matter. So I actually got a hold of the CEO using it's a personal matter because they can't ask you any questions beyond that. <laughs> and so make a long story short, speaking with the CEO of Whirlpool, they have a quote, production uh, department and they would have liked me to submit my invention to them fill out various paperwork that would basically be inimical towards what i'm trying to do as a company and so with that being said that didn't quite pan out but in response to your question robert yes i did embark on a licensing agreement with them didn't quite pan out and what I was going to mention before is I'm actually going to be headed to CES 2018 in hopes of getting a licensing agreement and or a royalty deal as well. You know, kind of, kind of like I mentioned, it, these kind of things become um, a bit cumbersome, uh, if you will. You have to kind of play your cards right and use the uh, it's a personal matter phrase keyword again. That, that gets you in many, 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 many doors for anybody out there watching. Just remember that you'll go very far. Um, I've gotten a hold of uh, Whirlpool that way. I did approach Igloo. Igloo is not the ideal person for the Anywhere Fridge company. Igloo primarily specializes in actual coolers that hold ice, whereas the Anywhere Fridge is, is not a cooler. It's an actual refrigerator and freezer, which is solar powered and needs no electricity uh, being plugged in a wall, of course. So Igloo didn't quite go for it. It wasn't quite their cup of tea. It's not what they specialize in as a company. Uh, we also tried, above Igloo, we tried uh, Coleman. Coleman's one of the big ones. You see them in uh, sports stores, sporting goods stores, things of that nature, Cabela's, REI. Coleman specializes in coolers. We did not attempt Yeti. Yeti's a big cooler company. Most of these companies like that are primarily cooler companies. They don't specialize in refrigeration. The companies that do specialize in refrigeration are companies such as Whirlpool and LG is a very big one. LG specializes in not only refrigerators, but everything. There's there's Kenmore. Kenmore is a big one. And at CES, what we're hoping to do is attain a licensing agreement with one of these companies because Kenmore is going to be there. LG is going to be there. Whirlpool is going to be there. Coleman Yeti, you name it, Igloo, they're all going to be there. Among a lot of other entrepreneurial companies, big companies like Apple, Facebook, Tesla, things of that nature. There's a, an enormous amount of opportunity that could come from going to a trade show such as CES, which uh, we're planning on doing in 2018 in Vegas. So we're definitely hoping to get a deal out of that. And how was the prototype process? You know, I'll tell you. I, I'll start from the, at the way beginning, actually, because, you know, it goes beyond when I sold candy as a 13-year-old. I actually used to be homeless at the age of 13 years old. That's why I started selling candy. That is the only way I could make money. Uh, I couldn't get a job at the age of 13 years old. You have to be 15 years, years old to get a worker's permit. That's why I started selling candy. That's where the idea originally originated from. And it progressed from there. I got a small apartment. I actually built my first Anywhere fridge in my small kitchen in my apartment. Now, my first Anywhere fridge was this huge uh, black prototype that I fabricated myself. You know, I went to Home Depot, uh, got the parts, put it together myself. The very first prototype, it was humongous. It was way too big. It was not very portable, like our prototype now, of course. Way too big, way too heavy. <laughs> it just wasn't very practical. Um, so that was my first one. I thought to myself, you know, there's got to be a way we can make this thing smaller and more portable. I built a second prototype. And I still had the prototype being black. 
you know, it was, I, I just thought the color black would be more attractive, but then I realized, well, wait a minute, black actually takes in heat, whereas white puts the heat out. So that's why we made our next prototype white, so that way it reflects the, the sun instead of absorbing the sun. You know, and it, it's just gone through quite a process. I, I, I made about I made about five prototypes of the Indian fridge. And my Indiegogo campaign, my first Indiegogo campaign was based on my green prototype. Well, actually, it was a blue prototype, but then we decided to put it to green. <laughs> and that one I actually welded together, soldered together. That one was way too heavy as well. It was made out of metal. And, you know, but thank God off of my Indiegogo campaign, we raised uh, crowdfunded enough money to make my next Anywhere Fridge prototype, which was professionally uh, manufactured by mechanical, electrical, and design engineers. And we got that one injection molded as well. So that one's the white one you see there on our website now. That is the working prototype model and the final uh, production model, which is very lightweight, weighs 38 pounds, portable, and very small. You can literally fold it up. It folds down to five inches, and you can put it in a backpack, take it anywhere you want to go. You know, before I called you, I checked the web, and, and I still, to this day, cannot find anything like the Anywhere Fridge. I mean, why do you think that is? That is a very interesting question. And, and, I, and I ask myself that question from day to day uh, at times, and I say, you know, why, why, isn't, why hasn't anyone come up with this? Why has anyone? Why hasn't anyone else invented this thing? I mean, you know, to me, it's it seems like you know. I just feel like God gave me this great idea to invent this collapsible, portable refrigerator and freezer that's solar powered, that you can live nomadically on. You can live off the grid on. You can go camping, take it to the beach twenty four seven, and it folds up and it's portable. And you know, it it, it is quite mind boggling to me that no one else has come up with this before me and still it's been about two and a half years and no one has still tried to copy it or infringe on it or anything of that nature and you know i i just look at it as one of those products that is so futuristic to the point to where it's really something that you have to be in tune with as the inventor you have to understand a product like the anywhere fridge you have to envision its capabilities uh, where it can go, who it can help. And I think the reason why no one else has attempted to infringe on my product or come out with something similar to it is because of the fact that I feel like the big companies out there think to themselves, and this happens to tons of inventors throughout history. I mean, even if you look at the, they just came out with a movie and that movie was called Joy. J-O-Y, Joy, it's a great movie about an American inventor woman. She invented the mop that you, you turn. It's amazing, amazing product. And in this movie, it describes on how she invented this product. And you know, after she invented this product, people never thought of the concept. They never thought of, wow, I didn't think that would be possible. You know, I didn't think that we can market this. And in the movie, she takes her product to a company, a big company like Kenmore, okay? And the company tells her, well, why would we want to make a mop where you can take the mop head off of the mop, put it in a wash machine and a dryer machine and reuse it when we can just keep reselling disposable mops? Because we can keep selling disposable mops and a more and more disposable mops and make more money off of the disposable mops opposed to people buying your mop that they don't have to throw away. They can just simply wash it and keep reusing it. And that's the philosophy behind these big companies. They don't want to see something like the Anywhere Fridge in existence because the Anywhere Fridge essentially makes coolers and other portable refrigerators obsolete. The Anywhere Fridge basically knocks all these other things of that nature off the market, if you really think about it. And that's why I feel nobody has tried it. You have been listening to the Invention Stories Podcast, Episode 3, Spencer Trotter and the Anywhere Fridge, Part 1. I would like to thank Spencer Trotter for being our guest. To learn more about the Anywhere Fridge, please visit www.anywherefridge.com. If you're an inventor and would like to be featured on Invention Stories Podcast, have a suggestion on how we can make this podcast better, or would like to sponsor our show, please contact us at inventionstoriespodcast at gmail.com. 
I want to thank all the listeners who have been emailing us with their suggestions on how to improve the Invention Stories podcast. The majority of emails we received said they thought the podcast was too long. It's probably the last thing I would have thought of that needed to be changed. So, in response to our market research emails, our episodes will be much shorter. And that is why this is part one of a two-part interview. We invite you to visit our website at www.inventionstories.com. Thank you very much for listening today, and please tell a friend.